Howdy spacers, and welcome back to Blank Space Dolls. It's been a while, I know, but I'm back with another video tutorial for you all. I hope everyone is staying safe and enjoying binge watching our favorite YouTubers. I know I probably have more than I should be, but it makes great crafting background noise, right? Alright, enough chatting, let's get right into the inspiration for this video, which is quite simple this time. Yep, this is it. I was really inspired by the words Lavender, White, and Lolita for obvious reasons, but instead of using the color Lavender, I decided to more take inspiration from the flower itself, which opened up my color palette a little bit more. And I also wanted to include Bonnet's lace and an edgy detail the way that I normally do. And of course, if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe for more doll content, and let's get right into the tutorial. I'm going to start with the Jane Doolittle as my base for this project, and what you want to do is remove the factory paint using 100% acetone, and also remove the factory hair, and soon enough you'll have a blank canvas to begin your project. I always try and lay down a base for me to begin to follow, as I'm doing my face-ups using a combination of watercolor pencils and the General's Pastel Chalk Pencils, which I talk about this all the time, you can see how much I use this pencil, it's very small. And I just go around that and that becomes my highlight color and I just kind of start highlighting in the first layer just so that way I can really get that build up of color and I can stop highlighting after a while and make it look a little bit more natural with more layers. Um, as I've said in previous videos, I'm not going to show too much of the face up process because I do find that um, sometimes it gets repetitive, especially if I do the same thing over and over. But I am trying a few new techniques with my face up method so I did show a little bit more than I normally would but it is still sped up quite quickly so if you're interested you can always look at that. And of course I'm blushing now with the Jane Davenport pan pastels which are almost like um, they're basically like a palette almost like a makeup palette but they're actual art pastels and I talk about those quite a bit also but I have all three of the palettes. There's like a warm, a nudie, neutral and then a cool tone. And so I'm going to be using those and kind of shading in. I do spend a little bit more time on the shading with this face because with each video I kind of want to teach you guys something but I also kind of learn from myself within the videos as well so I can see oh I should have maybe shaded the face a little bit more natural a little bit different but you can see here what she looks like in that first layer. And I'm just going to continue building up those colors. I'm also going to go in and start drawing in her eyebrows, and I always have the hardest time drawing in eyebrows I don't understand. Like, I try so hard to get them even and they still always come out either shifted to one side, one is always longer than the other, and I'm aiming for sisters, not twins, but I still think I end up with cousins or like, I don't know, extended family members, I don't know. The point is, they never come out even, but of course I'm using my same General's Pastel Chalk Pencil because it is the most opaque white pencil that I have and I thought that it would contrast really well with her purple skin tone. Here she is once I've sealed her a second time and I also decided to add purple and white freckles to her face just to add some dimension. Then normally in the third layer I begin to add a bunch of the details and I added the iris to the eyes and I'm also going to add the black liner. And if you are an OG spacer, you will understand it when I say I am drawing bottom lashes currently in this video. I have never drawn bottom lashes on any of my dolls. I will try to leave a link in the eye cards to some of my earlier videos where you will see I never did bottom lashes. So I'm trying to push and improve my art style, so I'm pushing myself to do a little more. So you can see here in layer 3 what that looks like, including the lashes and the cute little heart cutie mark on her cheek. Then in the next layer, I'm going to begin adding the pupil portion of her eye and then redefining all of those highlighted areas on the face, including right around the iris of the eye, the eyebrows, on the cupid's bow, and on her cutie mark. And here she is in layer 4 after being sealed with Mr. Super Clear. Then using any white acrylic paint, you can go in and add the eye shines and this really does breathe life into your creation. Here's her final face up after I've added gloss to the eyes and the lips. And the most exciting part of the video of course is the outfit. I went through my stash and picked out all the white and iridescent fabrics I could find and I actually had quite a bit so I wasn't able to use all of them but I thought it was nice to have a variety to choose from for the final look. 
for the bodice, I used the pattern that I purchased from Moonlight Jewel and her first pattern book volume one, which I love very much. And I'm just gonna use the top portion or the bodice portion of the pattern for my project. But it does come with a short sleeve and a long sleeve version in the actual pattern book. And I will leave a link to her channel in the description box below. Make sure to go show her some love. For the skirt of this project, I'm going to keep it rather simple and take this long length of lace that I had in my stash box and I'm going to fold it in half and then cut that and that will become the double layer of the skirt and then what you want to do is just use an elastic and gather it at the waistband which is really simple and then sew down that back seam and you have a perfect fitting skirt and I did whip stitch this piece of ribbon on and tied it in the back just to make it look a little bit more finished. And here are all the pieces of the outfit. I actually sewed the sleeves onto the top once it was on the doll to make sure I got the right length and fit that I wanted. And I also created this underskirt finished with this tiny lace just to add a little bit more poof to the skirt. And you can see here how it added a little bit more length as well. And I painted her scalp red and prepped her for hair. For the hair, I'm gonna be using this faux fur that I chewed up with my scissors. I'm actually gonna be flocking that onto her head to almost look like a shave style. And you can see that I've also painted little baby hairs onto her because, I mean, we didn't want that to be an abrupt start to her hairline. I was really happy with the way this turned out, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen my collection of Lolitas that I did for my anti-Valentine. And I figured I would show you guys how I made those bonnets. And here I'm using a simple pattern and you can kind of take the shapes. I give you general dimensions of what it should be and you can kind of alter it based on what size bonnet you're looking for. And because there's so many variations, you could really pick and choose how you create this. But this is what I found to be a good starting point. And of course, all of these patterns can be folded in half so that way you can get to symmetrical size. Then what you want to do is cut that pattern out and I did cut notches in that center fold just so that way I knew where the center line was and I'm going to cover both of those in packing tape and this just makes a more sturdy piece so that way you can pin and use it as an actual pattern. For the bonnet itself I'm going to be using this recycled cardboard and I'm actually using a frosted flakes box so you can really use anything. I feel very much like my froggy stuff creating things out of recyclable material but it's fun and it also keeps things out of the landfill. So go recycling and what you're gonna do is trace your pattern pieces around that you need two for the top and one for the bottom but for the second piece of the top you do want to cut a little bit shorter in I would say about three or four centimeters just to give it some seam allowance if you want to add lace I hope that made sense but then you're gonna just take some Fabri-Tac glue and start covering that with fabric and I'm actually going to use the back side of this iridescent butterfly fabric that I had and you'll actually see this fabric in an upcoming project very soon so stay tuned for that but I thought it was a cute accent piece and brought a little bit more shine and almost like sweetness to the outfit I guess and then you want to fold that excess seam allowance over the edges to conceal all of it and you'll also note that I use the printed portion of the recycled cardboard on the inside where they'll be glued together just so that way there's none of the print or pattern that'll show through the fabric that you're using so be very cautious of that. I also covered the headband portion in a matching fabric and attached the ribbon and kind of taped it into a U shape just so that way it would kind of start to mold to that shape before I placed it on the head. And then I'm going to trim the top portion of that with lace and then all of those raw edges and that printed fabric will be on the inside. And then you just want to attach the top of that bonnet to the headband portion of it and you can select whichever angle you want depending on how the hairstyle is and what shape you want for it. I chose to point the top portion of the bonnet a little bit more angled straight up and out. That way I could add a bow potentially later, I wasn't sure. Here you can see I also added glitter to the part line. Don't ask me why, I just thought that the part looked a little bit weird and I don't know if I saved the project or hurt it, but it never hurts to put glitter on things. And then you can see I added the bows, concealed the pins that I attached the actual bonnet with while also tying the bow around her neck and added some little pom-poms for some cuteness. To complete the outfit, I decided to go with these pastel pink shoes from Honey Swamp and I love the pastel pink color, but of course I needed them to be white to match the outfit. So I'm going to take my Liquitex basic acrylic color in white and do just that. And once that acrylic paint is dry, I do go in and add an iridescent white glitter to it as well, which I don't know if it's picking up on camera, but I thought it was a fun little detail. 
I have had a few of you ask how I attach my 3D lashes and this is just the simple way which I'm sure we've all seen in videos before but I do try to keep the full lash intact so I start by applying glue at just the inner winged liner portion of the eye and I normally will tilt the head back to allow the gravity to pull the lash backwards because um, they do have a tendency to want to pull forward and I do both inner corners of the lash at once and then once that's fully dry, I go ahead and attach the outer corners. And this is what it looks like once it's and dry. And that's the final detail. Now let's take a look at the final photos. I'm excited to introduce Brooke to the Spacer Workshop. She's just one in a series of sisters that have been completed and can be seen on my Instagram. I want to say a special thank you to all of my subscribers and getting me to 12,000 and counting. Thank you guys so much for joining the Spacer family. I hope everyone is staying safe and letting their crafting goblins out, if only for a little bit. And if you're new here and want to check out some of my previous videos, I will leave some of those linked in the end cards. And of course, if you want to see more of my completed customs, you can check me out on Instagram by searching at blank space dolls, where in my world, there's always a blank space. Let's customize it together. Until next time, spacers, see you soon. And then I'm also going to, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm.